So we're gonna go on to 7.8, which I think this is the last one in the integral section, and then we're gonna move on to series and sequences, so something completely different after this, okay? So this section is about something called improper integrals. And this, we're really going to continue talking about definite integrals again. So let me do a setup for you. Let's say, let's say we want to consider the region, the region that lies under. The curve, y equals, we're going to change it up, 1 over x squared above the x-axis and to the right of x equals 1. So let's draw a picture of this region, okay? You might have to think back to how you graph one over x squared. It's got a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. And if I plug in one, I get one. And your graph is gonna look something like this, just the right-hand side of the graph, which is all I care about, okay? There is something over here on the left that looks like this, but we're only concerned with to the right of one. So what I wanna do, the region I'm interested in is below, underneath this curve, above the x-axis, to the right of one. So I'm interested in that area. It seems like this would be if we're just calculating the area under this curve, it would be an infinite amount of area, right? Because my graph keeps going on, down, 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 right? So it seems like that's an infinite amount of, error, of area. And so you might want to say infinity. But let's pause for that on a moment, okay? And let's say I just want to calculate the area from 1 to some variable t. T is just bigger than 1, okay? So really, now I'm calculating just a finite amount of area. For sure. So let's call this area A of T the area that lies to the right of x equals t, or sorry, to the left. To the left of x equals t. I call it a of t, and it's the integral from one to t of my function 1 over x squared dx. And you're thinking of t as just being a constant, some fixed number bigger than 1. Okay. What do we get when we integrate 1 over x squared? Remember, think of it as x to the negative second, add 1 to the power, divide. So what you're getting is going to be negative 1 over x. Okay. And then you plug in your two numbers here. So you're going to get negative 1 over t minus a negative, so plus 1 over 1. 1 minus 1 over t.
So no matter what value of t we pick, t is bigger than 1, right? This a of t is always going to be less than 1 because you're subtracting something away from 1, right? So no matter how big t is, we have a of t is less than 1. Because a of t is 1 minus 1 over t. So you're always, when you plug in a value for t, you'll always get something smaller than 1 now. t can't be less than 1. We're picking it so that it's bigger than 1 because we want it to be to the right of 1. Mm -hmm. So what I really want to do is I want to see what happens as t gets larger, right? What happens as t gets larger? That sure sounds like a limit to me, right? What happens as something gets larger? So what we want to do is we really want to take the limit as t goes to infinity of a of t, this area. Well, that's not so bad. I'm looking at the limit as t goes to infinity of 1 minus 1 over t. What's that limit equal to? What happens as t goes to infinity to 1 over t? I'm dividing by larger and larger numbers which means I'm getting a smaller number, right? So this 1 minus t part that I get, this part here, the limit of that is 0. So overall, this limit is going to be 1. So you just told me that that area, as I let t get larger, it becomes 1. So it seems kind of crazy because we said at the beginning it should have infinite area, but now we're saying that it has a finite amount of area. Okay? So we can now say that if we integrate from 1 to infinity, 1 over x squared dx, this was the same thing as the limit as t goes to infinity, 1 to t, which we calculated to be 1. Okay. So this is an example of an improper integral. Because it has an infinity on, the, um, on one of the bounds. When you do these problems, don't treat that infinity like a constant. You have to do this process through where you rewrite it with a limit. Okay? On all of these improper integrals, you have to use limits on them. Okay? So this tells us exactly how to deal with bounds where I have infinities on them. Okay?